Yeah, the big thing, certainly in my career, we've moved away from big open surgery sometimes, which is absolutely applicable for a lot of things, but sometimes you, you don't want to damage the spine too much, so we moved to a lot of microsurgery. In my career, the microdiscectomy, I'm using the operating microscope, really has become the gold standard for disc surgery. But we're moving on to some cases, particular types of dyspodrine, you can do even with a very fine endoscope and remove the fragment, even less disturbance to the patient. That can even be done as a day case. But most microdiscectomy patients often go home the next day. Some even do them as a day case in centers in, uh, across the world. But the key is not damaging the spine, getting at the, the, the troublemaker and dealing with it. But it's very important to make sure the nerve roots are properly freed. And one of the failures of surgery is inadequate decompression. So it's very important to make sure the nerve's properly freed and fully freed. Because there is an argument that if a patient gets in another little bit of recurrent disc, if you haven't left, made a bit more room, they're back into trouble very quickly. But if you've got more space around the nerve, even if there's a little recurrence, it's probably not going to worry the patient so too, too much. So I'm a bit cautious of overzealous fanaticism for mini, mini this. But certainly with the robotic surgery, we can, we're looking in our group at using a, a, a robot to direct our approaches to these, because some of them are quite long sort of needle-guided techniques, uh, which would avoid a lot of x-ray in theatre, disruption of the flow of an operation. So we're quite keen to look at using an operating mode to get absolutely to target, really precisely, to millimetre accuracy, and then by dilating tissue or whatever the special tubes and things, you can get to it and you might cause less disruption. Very definitely a bang on target. You can check it very quickly with a robot and scanning techniques. So, so th there are a lot of technical developments, but the principles, like so many things in surgery, actually remain much the same. The pathology hasn't really changed. The man has been having a slip disc since we started walking upright, probably. Dogs get slip discs, lots of animals do. So, so this is not something that's a new disease, it's just the approaches are the less, more minimal, the better. Could you stop the discs degenerating? Well, that's a long way off. It's a bit like saying, what's the key to stop aging? You know, can you stop people looking older? Well, people try very hard by surgery and all sorts of techniques, but at the end of the day, you're looking at a very different type of area of, of sort of genetic manipulation or whatever, or stem cell research, all these things. But I think they're really in such early scientific areas. They're not in clinical, serious clinical practice and probably will not be for many, many years, who knows. But I think the key is prevention by good physical health and things is important. People who are doing office jobs, getting up, moving about, don't sit in chairs all the time, you know, being sensible. Some sports are probably excessive in what they demand of the spine, so be careful with those. Uh, but otherwise, I think treatment, what we're aiming for is looking at minimal neurosurgical, precision neurosurgery. And that's what's happening in the brain surgery as well. Very much moving to precision accuracy, A, in diagnosis, which we get with the MRI, which is infinitely better compared to the first MRIs I saw when I was a young trainee. So the sophistication of MRI is fantastic, and imaging, so even the CT scanning and other techniques. So we can get very sophisticated accuracy on the diagnosis and the anatomy. What we're looking for is very precise and pre accurate targeting of the, of the pathology and trying to get at it with minimal disruption to the patient. And that's, that's very much thing, a thing in development within our group of neurosurgeons, both in the head for brain tumor work and everything else, uh, as well as for the spinal work.